Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I have some interesting updates to share about Donald Trump's coup clowns. First, his now cooperating co-defendant, Kenneth Cheesebro, is claiming that he never believed the election was stolen. Um, or as Donald Trump writes it, Stalin, two L's. <laughs> so Cheesebro's attorney sat for an interview on MSNBC over the weekend, and he said, quote, first of all, Mr. Cheesebro never believed in the big lie. If you ask Mr. Cheesebro today who won the 2020 presidential election, he would say Joe Biden. Then he added that Cheesebro hasn't implicated anyone other than himself and that Trump should, quote, not be worried. So I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know if he thinks this admission about the election is the win. It, you know, it, it, it's not the win he thinks it is. Let's just put it that way, because he's saying, yeah, my client didn't actually think the election was stolen, but he still tried to help Trump change the results. <laughs> so he's literally admitting to trying to rig and steal the election for Trump for absolutely no reason. Not like, oh, he really believed it, like John Eastman, right? He really believed that the election was stolen. He was trying to right the wrong. No, he never believed it. And he was still trying to help him rig it. I mean, at least some of these clowns are true believers. People like Mike Lindell, I really think he is a true believer. I think he got duped. I think some of them like Lindell aren't that bright. <laughs> They're not bright enough to realize it. But for Cheesebro to know better, and try to dismiss all of our votes, all of us who voted for Biden, that is obscene. That makes him sound even worse than we thought that he was. Anyway, speaking of Lindell, I hope his telethon goes better than his Give, Send, Go fundraiser, because as of Sunday afternoon, he had raised less than $13,000. And from what I can tell, it's been up for about 90 days. So 90 days, $13,000. So Lindell faces the very real possibility of having to act as his own counsel in the Dominion and Smartmatic defamation lawsuits. Unless he can come to some sort of agreement and settle with them, he is going to, it looks like, be acting as his own attorney. That is going to be a clown show of epic proportions. I can't wait, personally. And Lindell received some more bad news last week because Kentucky election officials rejected his new Wi-Fi monitoring device. You guys may have heard about this. I'm not sure. Lindell announced that he has this new creation. He announced this in August during his so-called Election Crime Bureau Summit. And he said that he was going to start selling these devices to the public for less than $500. Now, he claims that they can detect Wi-Fi signals so poll workers and other people can identify electronic voting machines that try to connect to the Internet. That's his whole idea. Lindell told the audience, quote, what if there was a device that showed you, hey, there's a device on my network, there's a device online. And then you could tell what the device was, where it was at, what the name of it was, and you knew in the second it went online. So a representative for the Kentucky, Kentucky Secretary of State said that Lindell's device, quote, appears to be nothing more sophisticated or dangerous than a simple cell phone, which can detect a Wi-Fi signal. The presence of a Wi-Fi in a building does not mean that ballot scanners are connected to the Internet. State law prohibits that, and we do not certify ballot scanners for use if they have any capacity for connectivity. And election officials are saying these devices could be illegal themselves. They said anyone who's using them could be committing a felony because they can reveal the identity of voters. So someone walks into a polling place with one of these devices and they can see possibly the name or any, you know, some, some other 
identifying information of everyone who is carrying a cell phone, perhaps. Um, so this could lead to real violence, you know, more violence than we've already seen, more false reports of election fraud, because the officials point out some polling places will have their own Wi-Fi signals, places like schools and community centers. I mean, what could go wrong, right? What could go wrong with armed MAGA men and women who have these devices and who aren't exactly technologically savvy? Anyway, uh, the Northern Kentucky Kenton County Elections Board voted unanimously to bar poll workers from using these devices. And one of the board members who just so happens to be the county sheriff said that they will arrest anyone who breaks the law. But a county clerk said he is very concerned about these devices because they're pretty small, so they can easily be carried into a polling location covertly. No one's going to know. Um, next up is news about John Eastman and his disbarment trial. That's been going on for several months in California. On the witness stand, Eastman told the state bar that he never advised Vice President Mike Pence to outright reject the electoral votes for Biden. That directly conflicts with testimony given by other witnesses who talked with him, who he said this to, um, who argued about this matter with him. So, for example, Mike Pence's White House counsel, Gregory Jacob, he testified not just before the state bar, but also the January 6th Select Committee. He also testified live during the Select Committee hearings. And he said in all three of these settings, that Eastman did in fact urge the vice president to flat out reject Biden electoral votes. So, so far about the only positive testimony for Eastman has come in the form of character witnesses. Even his own fact witnesses have refuted or at the very least they couldn't confirm his version of events and the supposed election fraud. Well, last Friday, there was a former federal appeals court judge named Janice Rogers Brown, and she described Eastman as, quote, very careful and meticulous. And then she added, quote, I don't always agree with him, but he always has support for the arguments that he is making. However, this judge admitted she has never actually worked with Eastman and he never appeared before her in court. So, OK. Um, then there was testimony given by a law professor and former student of Eastman, a woman named Lori Stewart. She told the bar that Eastman is a, quote, very good man who has impeccable moral character, integrity. I think he's a brilliant, amazing, genius constitutional scholar. She also described him as a, quote, stickler for detail, the rule of law and being honest and being very candid. I'll just tell you this. She's also a professor at a school that follows the Evangelical Free Church of America doctrine. So, yeah, I, I wonder what team she plays for. I wonder who she voted for in the presidential election in 2020. Hmm? Big mystery. Yeah, consider the source <laughs> is what I'm saying. Her form of integrity is not my form of integrity. Integrity, she'll keep using this word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Anyway, I'll let you all know when I hear more. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, please share and subscribe. Please donate if you possibly can. Links are below in the description box on YouTube and the podcast. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.